the theme song of hell basically, as I said, the motto, C.S. Lewis said, is my will be done. The same theme song would be the one popularized by Frank Sinatra, that I did it my way. Oh gosh, Lord, help us all. I was gonna pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean it, because this is a, serious. Here we go. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. So I got an email recently from someone who said that they thought they heard me give a talk back in my hometown a bunch of years ago, or they thought it must have been me, but something along the lines that uh, Judas is in heaven and that Judas was doing God's will. He was a collaborator with Jesus in, in, off, in Jesus' offering of himself on the cross. Okay, wow, no, I would never say that. <laughs> let's, let's back up a little bit. First, um, would I ever say Judas is uh, in heaven? And the answer, nope, nope, would never say that. Uh, there are a number of scriptures <laughs> that indicate that that is not the case. Um, Jesus even says about Judas, it would be better for him if he had never been born. I'll tell you what, uh, St. Teresa of Avila said that even after the worst life on earth, if you get to heaven, your whole life will, will have been like one bad night in a cheap motel, something like that along those lines, right? So no matter how, how, how bad things were get, if Judas ended up in heaven, then yes, it was definitely worth it for him to be alive. So if Jesus is saying it would be better for him, him if he'd never been born, then that doesn't give me any indication that Jesus is saying that he's gonna be in heaven um, or is in heaven. Uh, secondly, Jesus even says, he calls him the son of perdition. He says, I haven't lost any of what you gave me except the son of perdition. Again, that's kind of an indication that Judas was lost. Now, <laughs> I'm saying this quickly. I'm not saying this dismissively. Hopefully that comes across, right? I'm kind of ramped up as I make these videos. Hopefully I'm not coming across flippant, like, or glib. Because when we're talking about heaven and hell, the eternal destiny of anyone, including Judas, that's never a, a light thing. It's never something, something, again, to be flippant or glib about. But at the same time, the person said, maybe it was you who said that Judas was the hero and that Judas is in heaven. I would never say that. At the same time, if you would say, well, Father, is Judas in hell? I wouldn't say that either. Why? Because the church, it's interesting to note this, the church has never ever made a definitive statement on anyone ever being in hell, including Judas. In this, and why? Why would the, would the church do this? Especially since there kind of be, seems like there might be some evidence there. Well, the reason is because Jesus had prohibited us from judging one another, right? Condemning one another. And now, keep this in mind. When Jesus says, do not condemn one another, lest you be condemned or judge one another, lest you be, uh, lest you be judged, he's not saying that we can't assess, right? He's not saying that we can't evaluate because in that same section, in that same scripture, Jesus also goes on to say, um, you'll know the tree by its fruits, like by the fruits of their actions, whether good or bad, you'll know whether this person at the core is good or bad, right? That sense. So here's Jesus who's not saying we can't assess, can't evaluate, can't say, oh, actually that action is bad or that action is good, that that belief is true, that belief is false. What he's saying is we can't judge a person's heart. Like we can't actually say their ultimate destination is be, to be separated from God. So basically the church takes that really seriously, even in the case of Judas, and says, no, we can't say. We can't say that because while there might be some indication that Judas has been lost. We don't know his heart. We don't know the mystery of God's grace and the mystery of God's mercy in the heart of anyone, even someone that is like a notorious sinner like Judas. One thing that uh, we believe as Catholics is that uh, every person, that God wills all men to be saved, that God wills all people to be saved. It's, it's letter to Timothy. Uh, the, the word of the Lord says this, that God wills that all people come to the knowledge of him, that come to, to know him, love him, and live with him forever. That God wants that. Because of that, it's one of the points of Catholic doctrine is that God gives every person the grace and the opportunity to say yes to him. We know, right? We, we know that all these people, people around us, as you've heard many said many times, that, you know, be patient with each other because everyone around you is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Absolutely. I look at my own life, I have inside information on my own heart and my own experience, and I realize how many opportunities God has given me. I realize how much grace God has given me. I see in so many ways, not all of them, but so many of the ways God has just spared my life from some of the bigger wounds that other people around me have experienced. And so I know myself a little bit, but I don't know you, and I don't know your struggle. I don't know your battles. I don't know what has made it difficult for you to trust the Lord. But here's the thing, God does know that. Therefore, God is the one who knows that, okay, 
in, even in the midst of someone who's wounded in ways that are unknown to everyone around them, struggles in ways that are unknown to everyone around them, God still will give every person, including you and all of your neighbors and all of your strangers around you, will give everyone on this planet enough grace and enough opportunities to choose him. That being said, not everyone chooses him. Like that being said, even though we can't say, yeah, Judas is in hell, we do know that hell is real. We do know that it's not just something that, that really, really, really bad people choose. <laughs> I know sometimes people will say things like, yeah, but listen, I, but I believe in Jesus and Jesus is love and he's mercy and, he, and, he, and he's goodness. Absolutely. But do you know that Jesus talks more about hell than any other person in the entire Bible? Did you know that Jesus said, narrow is the road that leads to life and wide is the road that leads to destruction and many are on that road? That it might be easier to choose hell than we think. I mean, think about, you know, there's some conditions in the, in the, in the scriptures for uh, being saved. Jesus says in John chapter 3, uh, unless you're born again of water and the Spirit, you can't be saved. So, baptism. John chapter 6, he says, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you can't be saved. So, the Eucharist. The scripture says, if you profess with your lips and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you'll be saved. So, faith. But also, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. It's actually doing the Father's will. And that's a big question. For those of us who have been baptized, who received Holy Communion, who have a degree of faith, the question is, do I do God's will? And when I don't, when I fail, do I go to confession? Do I reconcile with him? Or am I kind of indifferent? Because here's the crazy thing. I can get hell by choosing hell. I can also get hell by simply not choosing God. Our natural kind of disposition is selfishness. And I can have an eternity of just myself. Because in some ways, that's what hell is. You know, uh, C.S. Lewis said it like this. He said that the theme song of heaven is, Father, thy will be done. And the theme song of hell is, my will be done. So we think about this right now and realize, wait a second, it's not just really, really bad people who go to hell. It's anyone who would sing that Frank Sinatra song, I did it my way. Sorry, let me clarify. Not everyone who sings the song goes to hell. I'm not saying that. Okay, not being glib. Again, not being flippant about this. But I just want to clarify, that's not the case. I've been at funerals where they've asked to play that song as the funeral song. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's nothing more antithetical to the gospel than that song being played at someone's funeral. Not only because it's not sacred, <laughs> don't play it at a funeral, but also because it's basically a big thumbing the nose to the Lord himself. We only get to heaven if we don't do it our way, but if we actually say, Father, thy will be done. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. <sighs> we don't know who goes and chooses hell. We do know that no one ends up there by accident. We're either there because we chose it or we're there because we didn't choose the Father's will. We're there because we didn't choose God himself. Last thing, Judas is not the hero of the story. So yeah, but, but what he did in betraying Jesus is he made the whole thing possible. No, no. Yes, God used the horrible, evil decision of Judas to betray his rabbi, his friend. Yes, Jesus, God was able to use this terrible decision made by Judas, but that doesn't make Judas a hero. That means that God can even take our brokenness and do something incredible with it, but it does not make Judas' choice the right one, and it doesn't make Judas a hero. I hope, I hope, that God willing, hey, hey, I get to heaven. I hope and pray you all get to heaven. And I hope that would be amazing if at the end of Judas's life, even as he was hanging himself, they repented and turned back to the Lord Jesus. I hope that's the case. But that story's been written. He is either in heaven or he's in hell. Your story's not over yet. 
Your story is not written yet. Your story is not completed yet. You and I, we still have the chance to choose hell. I don't want that for you. We also still have the chance to choose heaven. We also still have the chance to choose God. And not only, gosh, not only do I want that for you, God himself wants that for you. In his son, Jesus Christ, he made it possible for every one of us to choose heaven. Do that. Choose heaven. Because if we don't choose heaven, by default, we are choosing the other thing. Again, this is a heavy topic today, but that's why I'm praying for you, because we're in the game. We're in the game. And these are the stakes. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.